ठीक है ठीक Today we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ is very symbolic because He was born in such a manner that even the poorest of poor won't be born in the stable. And He was put in the bed which was made of dried grass. He came on this earth to show people that for a person who is an incarnation, or who is a highly evolved soul, is not bothered about the comfort of the body. His message was so great and so deep, But he had disciples who were not prepared for the battle they had to fight. It's the same thing that sometimes happens with Sarva. He had only twelve disciples. We too have twelve types of Sarvas. And all of them, though tried to dedicate themselves to Christ, fell a trap, some of them, to the worldly aspirations or to their own hankerings. His message of love and forgiveness is the same even today. Preached by all, all the saints, all the incarnation, all the prophets, they all have said about love and forgiveness. If it was challenged or 
people felt that this won't work out. They were asked to have faith in what is said. But they were simple people in those days, so they obeyed Him. Some of them definitely were very good, some of them half baked and few of them were people who were doubting. He came on this earth to prepare for us our Agya Chakra. And despite all his efforts, one finds very difficult that the people who follow Christianity have the worst type of agya, worst type, extremely aggressive, extremely planning type, futuristic, I mean all the troubles of the right side are found in those countries who claim to be Christians. Even the early Christians who were Gnostics, Gna, Gna in Sanskrit means no, though had the knowledge, the beginners were also suppressed and tortured by the people who were supposed to be in charge of Christian religion. And so many Christians were massacred by the so-called Christian priests, and Christian churches. And still it is going on. What you find in the West is a great influence of these churches on the minds of the people. Otherwise they are supposed to be intellectuals, otherwise they are supposed to be analytical, otherwise they are supposed to be something very brainy. But when it comes to temples and churches, when it comes to religion, when it comes to Christianity, I think their brains are blocked, completely blocked by some sort of a mesmerism. They just can't think that there could be something very wrong with these people. When living in Italy I found out I was shocked how this Catholic Church was working out and what the priests were doing and all kinds of scandals, much more than we have in our country. Money bungling and molesting women and having children, I mean every sort of dirty habit there, supposed to be priests. They were called fathers, they were called mothers, they were called sisters, they were called brothers. And to me it was really a shock. I didn't know that such things are happening in the name of Christ. What Christ tried to show through His birth, there's no need to have very comfortable, great birth in a big hospital in London, no? The simplicity of His birth should have made all the Christians extremely simple and not at all money-oriented. For money they went all round, crushed so many people all over the world when you go to Brazil or to Chile or to Argentina, you do not find a single man belonging to the aboriginal people. And they are so unkind to them, 
unbelievable how aggressive these people are. Even in England where there's Protestants, I find the same thing among them. We must go on saying thank you, thank you, morning till evening, otherwise you are finished. Racialism, what was the race of Christ? Was He a fair man? No. Was He a white person? Not at all. What was His color? He was brown like Indians. From where does this racialism come? to these Westerners, I just don't understand. It has nothing to do with Christ or if it is real Christianity. You go anywhere, you'll be surprised how the faithful, simple-hearted people are misused by these churches. They are used for voting, they are used for uh, money, for everything, to such an extent that money was made artificially counterfeited in billions by the church itself. Such autocracy, such control, such authority, they had that whatever they did was, the Pope is infallible, whatever he does is all right. No idea of sinning, no idea of hell, no idea of Christ, which was nothing but purity and innocence. Christ had taken a hunter, Christ has taken a hunter in his hand and hit all the people who were selling in front of the temple because God cannot be sold. They were not selling God, they were selling only goods, but He said the respect of the temple, talked about the respect of the temple. Another great thing Christians have done is to blame Jews for killing Christ, wonderful people. Put all the blame on others, this is the speciality of Christians even today. is to put the blame of what wrong you are doing on others, very common. And this is what you see very clearly in those countries who call themselves Christians. They blamed Jews. First of all, those who were Jews that time might have been Indians later on, all right, so they don't believe in reincarnation. Do you mean to say the same Jews who were there are born again. Thirdly, that the Jews never killed Christ, never, because in the multitude. How can you decide? It's the judge who decided and ordered. He was a Roman. So the Roman Empire didn't want to take the responsibility of his death, so they said Jews have killed. So Mr. Hitler got after them and he really tortured them, really, it's too much. One can't even understand how can… he believed in Catholic religion. How could he kill small little children? in the gas chamber. But now the same people who were tortured are also becoming very aggressive. And now they are against the Palestinians and the Palestinians on their own are Muslims and the Muslims are playing a havoc all over. So when you go through the history and see life of Christ. What do you find is aggressiveness. From one to another, from that to another, passing from one to another. If somebody slaps somebody, 
the another person will try to kill that person. So this religion has created this divisiveness. People are just killing each other in the name of God, in the name of religion. Even in Sahaja Yoga you will be surprised, I have seen people taking advantage of My name or trying to get into some mesmeric groups. I can't understand. Using My name, using My photograph. So beware, this should not happen to you people. Using the name of Christ, the incarnation as Divine Love, they are doing all these works of violence, hatred, of cheating, I mean very debased people. And from one to another it passes, to the another it passes. Same thing happens in Sahaja Yoga. If I told somebody that you are no more a leader, somebody else is the leader, immediately that person gets angry. He forgets what good Sahaja has done to him. He just forgets. If I tell him the leadership pass should pass to somebody else, finished, then he forgets that whatever good is done to him, whatever Sahaja Yoga has done for him. He is living only because Sahaja has helped him. So this leadership goes into the heads of people. Sahaja Yoga is not here to make leaders out of you, no, never. It is just for convenience we have leaders. And if they become inconvenient we have to change it, that's all as simple as that. But still I find this idea of authority is something very great. And they start using it left and right everywhere. It is happening practically in every country, has happened and still happening. which is a very sad thing. This will never bring forth My efforts. My effort is to synthesize the whole world, not to divide, by no chance to divide. Only thing, whatever is wrong, whatever is unholy has to brought to your notice. See, as a housewife, when we clean the rice, there are some white stones in it. We take them out. We don't cook rice with that stone, do we? And such stones have to go out. So some of them are just like stones. You cannot change them. Namadeva has said that they are like a fly, who when lives, gives us trouble by coming on our food and by making us feel nauseating. And if by mistake we take her inside our stomach, she's dead but still she troubles us. These are all rakshasas, I should say. They can never understand Sahaja Yoga and they will always try to trouble us. But what must the people who have achieved Sahaja Yoga should do. Should they also take to such methods? I have never blamed anyone for anything. Like people say, Mother, he didn't give any money to Sahaja Yoga, so he's lost all his money. I never say like that. He should have donated some money. I never ask for donations, I never ask for money. Every time I say it's all sufficient, don't give. I have never asked for a single pie from anyone to be given to me, even when I need it. 
because I know I don't have that problem. From the life of Christ one has to understand. He had no problems, he was fearless. He knew he was the Son of God, he had no problems at all, he faced everything, even his crucifixion. And people, I think, liked his crucifixion or what they carried the cross. Of course, is the, is the transformed uh, symbol of swastika, no doubt, but still, he had to sacrifice his life. He sacrificed his life for all the human beings, not for only white or black, brown or blue, but he sacrificed his life for all of us so that we could cross over our agya. The condemnation we should do is not of others but of ourselves. We can call that as a crucifixion of ours, by which we see, as Sahajogis, where are we? I'm told there are some eighty, ninety Sahajogis who have come who were mesmerized by some people. How could Sahajogis be mesmerized? Is it possible? They never must be praying, they may not be doing meditation. How can they get into it? And now they are asking for forgiveness. I forgive, but that doesn't mean they'll be all right. We cannot fix them anymore. We do not put spoilt apples with the good ones, do we? There's no wisdom. They are already spoilt and they should keep out till I say. They should not attend any center, they should not come to any puja, they should let them cleanse themselves. Though a rotten apple cannot get well, they can. They should try to understand that how they were not surgogies. If a surgogi can get mesmerized, there was this of doing surgoga. What's the use of getting your kundalini raised? That means they are very poor surgogies. Surprisingly, I have not seen this kind of a phenomena in the West. Very surprising. Western surgogis, whatever they wear, they are great surgogis, I must say, if you consider the number of good people there. They have given up so-called Christianity, they have given up all this nonsense, drinking, drugs, womanizing, everything they have given up. And I haven't met one person who has taken to drinking again or who has taken even to smoking. <laughs> this yoga bhumi of yours, which is India, how could it happen here? Especially in Maharashtra, I think some Devilish people are born in this Maharashtra all the time because how is it they tortured each and every saint? How? How is it they have been so much enticed by Somebody who is saying something which I've never said? Surely, 
shows a very low type of people, very low. And they must have been always being born in this Maharashtra, I'm sure. And again they are born today. I never wanted to talk about this at the jubilant time like this when Christ was born. Yes, it's a thing of jubilation because He came as a Saviour, He did everything that is possible under the sun. For us it's all right, but what about Him? What did we give Him? In the same way many Sahajogis go on demanding, Mother, we can't even meet you, we can't even shake hands with you, we can't even fall at your feet, we can't do this, we can't do that. It surprises me. You must do this, you must do that, all the time lecturing to me. What you must do? You must do is to meditate and to believe that this Paramachaitanya is My power and that you have felt My power within you. The more you are away from you, the better you will be. Absolutely I can't understand the demanding nature of some Sahaja Yogis. They have got their Jagruti which would never have happened. If Christ wanted, He would have killed all of them and lived very well, but I think He must have been fed up with the stupidity all around. So at this time we have to understand that such a great incarnation came on this earth. Of course He couldn't give realization. So imagine the people who were about to crucify Him, how could He give realization? Supposing somebody comes with a dagger at Me, can I give them realization? It's all right. Nobody listened to them, nobody thought anything of them, but not you. You people have got your Realization, you are born again people, you are great people, your potential is there. Instead of utilizing that, now what are you doing? How many people are really involved in Sahaja Yoga? Introspect. They have their own business, they have their own this thing, they have... how many are really involved in Sahaja Yoga? She had only twelve disciples, except for one or two. All of them dedicated, without realization, dedicated fully to the work of Christianity and we spread. Because they had not much idea about the whole thing. The Christians that they had all were just converts, useless people. And I would say that if they did not do any justice to the birth of Christ, one can understand. But what about you people who are born twice, who have got their self-knowledge, who are so equipped with all the powers, who are connected with this all, power, what you can call the power of Divine Love, all your powers can be utilized, can be known. It's like some dynamic machine which has started. Few wheels are moving, 
But there are so many wheels after wheels and so much you can do. I cannot blame the Christians who are so stupid because after all they never got their awakening, only some uh, priest would bring some water, put it on their head and baptize them, finished. But what about you people? I have lived because of you, because I wanted to see that you people mature. That's the idea of the Mother. There are many who are mature, I would not say, but still many have to be mature. Doesn't mean that you should be able to give big lectures or write books or anything, but within yourself you should mature. Your own personality should flower into the fragrance of love, of divinity. This is what I would say the difference between me and Christ. He said, Baba, I had enough. No, no, no more. With these stupid people. Not me. I knew where, like, what was the world like. I knew what had happened to this world. Today the world is much worse because all the religions are fighting among themselves, firstly. All the politicians are trying to be very badly corrupt, competing in that corruption. Nobody has sense of truth and honesty. Everybody is involved in the advertisement, newspapers, media, this, that which is the most corrupting influence today. With all this background, I know by the year 2000, Sahaja Yoga will come out in the whole world as something very great. You didn't allow me to con complete the sentence. If you people become real surgeons, all of you, all of you who are attending to me here, even this much group, if it becomes real surgeons, it doesn't matter if I cannot meet you personally, it doesn't matter if I cannot go to your places, it doesn't matter, nothing matters. Christ's disciples worked with you, He never existed. So it's not important. What is important is that you are the people who are responsible for the emancipation of this world, for the synthesis of this world. So bring peace and joy and happiness to people. Just now when I was coming, people spread the shawls. It reminded me of Christ when He came, they brought palm leaves to wish Him and spread their shawls on the ground for Him to go. And where does He go? To gallows. He goes to cross, He goes for His death. When you show your love for Me, you have to know that you have to love the whole work of Sahaja Yoga. It's not some personal relationship with Me, that is going to work out. All these Western countries in the influence of Christianity will go down, you'll see. They are going down already because there's no morality, there's recession, all kinds of problems. Their children are wavered, they are drinking, smoking, doing all kinds of things. Even their influence on us is corrupting us. Antichrist activity, throughout if you find it's nothing but Antichrist activity. Who is the Antichrist? They are describing he is the Antichrist, that fellow is the Antichrist. That's not the thing. There's an Antichrist within us who accepts all these things which are against the purity 
and love of Christ. So first of all, among yourselves, what is he going? Sit down. You must teach your children some manners. This girl who was drowned is because you neglected the child. The father, where was he? I don't know. I can't understand how can a child be left like that. It's important to discipline your children as yourself. In the West, if you have a neighbor, you had it. He'll try to find out where you go, what you do, he'll have a binocular to see and you make any noise, you are finished. But even if you sing, you are finished. In that way Indians are better. We don't have that noise uh, difficulty, we don't. Indians can live in the noise. Wanted to find out why Indians are so adjustable to noise, they don't mind noise. I have found out the reason is that in the West people are under stress and strain and that's why they can't bear. But in India people don't know what is stress and strain is. Still that has not developed, I don't know how, to that extent. That disease has not come. That might be the reason they are so much uh, frightened of noises. People will come from villages here, they'll sleep on the station, nothing happens. The trains are coming and going, nicely sleeping. <laughs> Imagine in the West, thank God in Italy we have neighbors little far away, we have little trouble. But in England, we had to go on changing our ashram from one place to another, run away from here to there because of great neighbors we had and one of them had the name Mr. Peace, I don't know who gave him that name. <laughs> Such contradictions in life. Such horrible contradictions. I don't know how will they learn how to love their neighbor. But Indians do, somehow they don't have this problem, not much. Sometimes they have, but not so much. But if there's a music symposium, all the neighbors will join, bring tea, bring this, they'll be enjoying the music. But there the collectivity is so little, I think, I can't understand how can they call themselves Christians. Only they go to church, well-dressed. And our mayor told me that for fifteen minutes, hardly we can sit, we start looking at the watches, fifteen minutes. And after half an hour, we all run out of the jail. And how is it these people are sitting with you for hours together? I said, I must be mesmerizing them. <laughs> I mean, they, they are not so collective. Unless until they drink, they cannot be collective. Unless until they get intoxicated, they cannot talk to each other. They are all the time tired. They are supposed to be Christians. They're so tired, you see them in the films or anywhere, they come and say, oh. <laughs> well, what has happened? Young people, all the time thinking, 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 which comes from agya, which comes from anti-Christ activity. Anti-Christ activity, thinking, 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 what should we do tomorrow, what is to be done and all that. Still, we have to hope 
that this kind of religion will finish. All such religions must finish. They have to go now, it's too much. You cannot support them. They are so much full of anti-religious temperament that you just can't bear them. It's better to finish Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, Sikhism, Buddhism, Jainism, all isms one after another. To what religion did Christ belong? I don't know. You are belong to one religion, which is a surge, which is the universal religion, which is pure religion, which is born within you. You don't belong to any other religion because there is no religion in that. So, by the time, two thousand years, I hope, all these religions will run away from this earth. All of them fighting for nothing at all, killing each other for nothing at all. They want, they want to fight, they like to fight. Why blame Qur'an, why blame Bible, why blame Christ, why blame anyone? They want to fight, they are of divisive nature. They want to have separate nations, separate community, separate this. Once you start of separating, you are anti-Christ, absolutely. In Sahaja Yoga also I say that you are one identity, you are not separate country, separate organization, separate this, doesn't exist in my own idea, doesn't exist. I never thought of it. We are all children of one father and of one mother. We have no business to think we are separate. Even now I have seen groups are made very easily. How? The groups are made Groups are made. Like I find Maharashtra sitting together. Sakatya Pikat besides. Gappa Chaluet. Then we have group of the North Indians. Indians are quite separatist, I tell you, somehow by temperament. North Indians also have separate, separate ideas. You must come to Indore. Why? Is it not a part of uh, India? They can't come to Delhi? You must come to Kanpur, you must come to Allahabad, you must come to Indore, you must go to every village, every place. Why? You are born today in Delhi, tomorrow will be born in some horrid place, then this place is mine, uh, this is my house, must come to my house, and that's another headache. You must come to my house, mine, 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 mine. Once you start that, you are finished, you are no more belonging to Christ, no more. This is a very, very common program even today that now if you see around yourself, must be people from your own country.
just see around yourself. Are you sitting with another people? people? Who is the other? In Sahaja Yoga, who is the other? We are all one. At this unity we have to learn, if we really love Me and Christ. All this groupism and all this has to end now among Sahaja Yogis, must end. We are all one identity, we are all one living body, we are all one living organism. We cannot say we are separate. Can this hand separate from the body? Can it exist? Once you start giving it up, you'll be surprised, you will have real enjoyment. But once you have all these ideas about my mind, you can't even enjoy Sajok. Cannot enjoy anybody else, my wife, my children, my house, this, that. That awakening has to come with it. I don't belong to this country. Many girls, you see, and boys have written, we'll have Indian marriage. Only the age of the woman is thirty-five years, only. Now where will I find a husband for her in India? Must be some widower or somebody. Must have an Indian marriage, can you beat that? Such people, it's impossible to marry them. I give you choice, all right, have a choice. I also have a choice. I can't marry you. That is my choice. You have the freedom to say where you want to marry, all right, marry. But as far as I am concerned, I can't marry you like that. You have to marry wherever there is a good match for you. Many Indian girls have married Indian boys and have suffered a lot, such a lot you won't believe. But to bhi humko Hindustani hi chahiye, to kariye. Not in Sahaja Yoga anymore. We have not been able to organize even one marriage of a Hindustani with a Hindustani. Not possible. That's not the desire of the Divine. Why don't you find in your own community somewhere same thing? As in India it's very particular, very, very particular. Like when my daughter was to be married, they said, no, he is not a Srivastava. If he is a Srivastava also, he is not the same Srivastava as you. Even if he is the same Srivastava, his, this thing is different. I mean, I said, no, this is going to work. Because I had all my elders living and they were after me. I said, whether he is a Srivastava or not Srivastava, I am going to marry them. Finished. My husband agreed. Same with my grandchildren. If you get Shastra well and good, otherwise forget it. Maharashtrians also same. Maharashtrians who have become Christians, also the same, you will be amazed. Christians. Now they are saying we are Dalit Christians, means who were converted from the lower caste into Christianity. Now there's a new caste. Once you have become Christian, what is your caste? You are Christian, not that. They are Dalits and they are higher Christians. They will not marry in the Dalit and Dalit won't marry in the higher. Supposed to be Christians following Christ, going to church regularly, 
well dressed. Even if they do not have a proper suit, they must wear like English some suit, borrow it and go to church. Because according to Indian Christians, Christ was born in England. Really, you won't believe. Unless and until you wear a suit and a tie, you can't go to the church. Can you imagine anybody going with a dhoti to church? <laughs> Impossible situation. Even in my time, thank God I didn't marry a Christian, but my own sisters and all were forced to wear veils and not the saris, wear the frocks and the veils. Can you imagine the wedding dress? Uh, we in Indian women can't do without the saris, but they were forced. So many women married the way the English marry. And I was amazed, even the Japanese who are Christians come to Australia and dress up like these English brides and get married because they are Christians. That shows that they believe that Christ was born in England or what? Actually for Christians it's not necessary to worry about any dress. All this nonsense comes from the West that you must dress up like this, you must have your spoon here, fork here. Did Christ eat with fork and spoon? He was born in the manger. It's not impossible to understand these people are Christians so much worried about the spoons and forks and they come to your house for dinner, they lift the plate to say, from what? Uh, company you have bought it. Very important. Such silly people, I tell you, they call themselves Christians. Christ was born in the manger and so particular about nonsensical things. You see, one must understand the greatness of His birth in which He has so shown that He was born with the calves tied there and the calves were there. He was born in the manger. Not only the Christians abroad, but they are also in India the same, you can make out a Christian in no time. See them on a Sunday morning. That way my father opposed it, he used to wear kurta. Because Christ wore kurta. He didn't wear suit, did he? And so superficial they are, nothing to learn from them, they will put here on top, Saville rose, on top of the suit. Such stupid people, I tell you, and the Indians are following them left and right, I can't understand. They are antichrist. Don't follow them on these points. Indians have at least certain uh, sense of dignity. If you have any, why should you wear a suit on a May day here, in this heat? We are Sajogis. We have to wear a common dress of a common man. Whom are we going to impress except for this Param Chaitanya? They are extremely superficial, extremely meticulously particular about their dress, how they live, and it's really horrible. I've seen this. And that is the reason I think I should warn you, don't, don't take to that culture 
that is anti-Christ culture, absolutely anti-Christ in every way, in every way they have insulted Christ out and out. You people should not anymore insult Christ. In a simple way you live. Uh, now this sari they forced me to wear, it's like a big bag for me, but what to do? Yesterday also they forced me, today also they forced me, I'm supposed to wear all this because I'm Adi Shakti, supposed to be. If I was Christ, I would have been better off. He was much more free than me. <laughs> now, with all this, what we have to know? What is the message? What is the message of Christ? That you develop your spirituality, your divinity, by which you know what is the dignity of a Sahaja Yogis. He was your eldest brother, I should say. His lifestyle you should follow. Absolutely not afraid of anything, not worried about any job, nothing. Not worried about any business, anything. Absolutely free from all worries. So many examples we have, beautiful examples of his life. But when we see Christians, we try to reflect it as an expression of the life of Christ and that is where we make mistake. They are by no means, they are for Christ, they are by no means following Christ. So, as Sahaja Yogis, we have a different culture. We have a culture where we respect morality, we have dignity, we have our own personality. We are fearless, we don't tell lies, we don't cheat and we can never get mesmerized. So we have to have, now we can call it the mother's culture. and which is not in any way showing off or in any way taking to artificial thing. The whole thing will change, the whole concept will change, the whole idea will change once you understand that you are now in the mother's culture, which is now they are forced me, so I'm wearing all right. You want me to wear all right, I'll wear. But normally, if you leave it to me, what do I wear? You know that. Secret is out already. If you want to give me presents, give me. I never asked you for presents, nothing. Forcing the presents on my head. All right, for your joy's sake, you have it. Now what to do? But one thing I must request these Maharashtrians, they are not going to give me any more, any more, again any more, what they call is the OT part. My OT is over full. Absolutely nobody has to give me OT. If somebody gets married, if somebody has a child, somebody has anything, they'll bring the OT. There is no need to give any OT to me, you can go to the temple, give your OT there and it is resold and resold and resold. In between the sellers who are Gujaratis, the Brahmins who are the Pujaris, make money. So no more OT, nobody is going to give me any OT whatsoever. On a Christmas day, I have to say one thing, what did we give to Christ? And 
the second question, what are we going to give to Mother? This is very important. I don't want anything from you, nothing. I am fully content with myself. What I want is you must dedicate yourself to Sahaja to truth and to love. I'll be very happy. And also not to talk like what you call, Christ has called them, murmuring souls, talking here, there, one thing there, all this I don't like at all. I don't like it. And it should not be done. If you do like this, you will fall fall very badly. This is the last judgment. Either you go to heaven or you'll go to hell. It's already working out like that. Now let's see, where are you? So I have to again and again tell you as your mother, I have to correct you and tell you that remember this is the last judgment. And please do not take any more to the activity which are anti-Christ. You can judge within yourself, whatever you are doing is not good. And for that best thing is to dedicate yourself to Sahaja, but not to make money out of Sahaja, not, not to make politics out of Sahaja, but make Sahaja like a big, huge, big tree and it will work out, I know it will work out. You have the potential, that's why you are here. May God bless you.